So right now, this current rally in silver is trying to blow through this structure. When silver clears that momentum structure, it is very clear, very wide. It's a big base. Our bet is that silver price will, like a vacuum, rally up to the top end of the range of the last few years. Most people look at price charts and uh, you know they draw lines on them, uptrend lines, flat lines, so forth and so on, looking for breakouts. Uh, and sometimes they'll overlay a moving average on it. You know, even in the Wall Street Journal, you see the S&P with a 65-day average or whatever, you know. Uh, we do that too, but then what we do, our next step is to take the price and the moment and the moving average, whichever one we use, we may maybe a very long-term average, like a 36-month, which we call annual momentum, meaning three years average, or three-quarter. You know, last three quarters of a year, that average changes every quarter. You know, uh, or we we could get down to daily stuff too for micro analysis. But generally, we're focused on intermediate to long term, and so we tend to use averages that have some duration to them. Uh, three quarters of a year, three years, that kind of thing. What we then do is we plot the price bars instead of just on a price chart with the overlay of the average. We use the average as a zero line. And so price is either above that zero line or it's below that zero line. So you oscillate it. We create an oscillator using the average. And that way we see different type of movement in that given market in its relationship to not just some price level, but in relation to that moving average, how much over, how much under. And when we plot that, over time we see different trend situations setting up visually on the oscillator that you may not see and probably don't see on the price chart. And usually when a trend changes, I would say almost all the time, momentum will turn first. You'll see a trend break an uptrend line breakdown or a flat floor breakthrough before you see the same type of thing occurring on the price chart. So it, to some extent it's advantageous because it, it gives you an edge, gives you a warning. And uh, right now one of the markets we're most excited about, both fundamentally but especially technically, is uh, silver. We thought there was a possibility of that <clears throat> during this quarter. In fact, there was a point at which gold, which already did some positives on its quarterly momentum in the fourth quarter of last year. But when gold did it, silver didn't agree, it didn't cross its structure. So we said, okay, hold on. We want silver to say, yes, I'm with you, gold. And it didn't. And sure enough, what happened to gold? Gold dropped from the high 1800s down into the 1700s again. It pulled back. Uh, and silver is still poised below its breakout structure. We want to see silver cross its structure because gold is already positioned positively to go. We want silver to echo that. Uh, there was a point at which in that pullback from the November high in gold, we saw some vulnerability on gold monthly oscillators that suggested you could get a downside flush. In other words, if we're going to get one, the door was open for the bears to do it. They didn't do it. Two weeks after we put up our caution flag, we said, okay, caution flag is waved down. The chance to break the market is gone. And uh, sure enough, then gold firmed back up. So did silver from below 22 up to over 24 recently. So we think that that opportunity that you talked about, yeah, yeah, it was possible. But I think that opportunity opened and closed and they didn't exploit it. So the bears had all their fundamental argument, you know, the feds are going to do this and all that stuff. And yet now, you know, they're not making any money. No, silver hadn't exploded yet, but they're not making any money on the short side. Let's go back to 2019, 18, 17. Silver was in the, in the doldrums, depressed, underperforming gold, very low price levels, up and down, but not able to get out of the hole. Okay. Just before it took off, it had that last plunge in March of 2020, dropped you down to about $11. And it turned and burned like a rocket. Because when we ran annual momentum of silver back then, we saw a different picture than we saw on the price chart. We saw a massive ceiling, flat, a flat ceiling above. It wasn't quite so clear on silver. And we burst through it. And by the time it burst through it at about $19, within literally weeks, it was nearly 30. So, you know, it, it, it went from the, the teens to 30 in a matter of a couple months, actually. And it did it because it broke out of a massive annual momentum base. And since then, now this would be the mid-2020 time period. Silver ran up 
got to near 30. And then it leveled off into a range, a boring range, basically from just below 22, up to 30, back to 22, up to, you know, et cetera. And then over the last, uh, since especially this summer, which is when the Fed came out and said, we're going to taper. You know, we're going to get tough. Okay, right. And everybody believed them. Okay, fine. Well, maybe it's true. But if you look at gold and silver, they got bashed and they got bashed and they got bashed all during that time period. But each of the sell-offs were redundant. Meaning, yeah, you'd beat it up, gold would go down, silver would go down, then they come back up again. You know, about the way you sold it, then they go down again. They come back. You, you couldn't get a sustained downside going despite multiple selling episodes from mid-June last year through late last year. Silver has repeatedly come back down to the $22 level on price, nipped it out a bit. We thought, frankly, that maybe it would go down and hit 21 just to clear the decks, if you know what I mean. Because there's so many lows that occurred at around 22, going back to summer of 2020, that maybe we needed to flush it out run the stops, but they wouldn't go to 22. They went to 2150, okay? <laughs> and now you're back up to 24. Well, over the time that silver's been doing this up down with sort of a slight downward staircase, and not really on the price charts, you don't really get a good trend structure to define where you know there's a trend line. You can say, oh boy, there's a, there's a structure. If we can get above it, we could take off. But when you look at quarterly momentum, Annual momentum gave you the original buy in 2020. Then you've been oscillating above that level since. But quarterly momentum is when you measure price, in this case weekly bars, in their relationship to a three-quarter moving average, which only changes once every quarter. You adjust it. Okay? It's similar in duration to a 200-day average. Okay. Anyway, we plot that, and we ended up with the chart, and you can show your, your viewers later, the an oscillator that continues to come up to the same level at the zero line, in other words, from below, the momentum readings. What that means is the price of silver has repeatedly come up and hit the three-quarter moving average from below and been unable to close a week out above it ever since breaking below it late last summer. And it's done it now three times since it broke below it last summer. It's bumped the zero line three times, so you have a perfect horizontal structure that you cannot see on a price chart. So we have what we call a beautiful ceiling, a pending breakout structure. Normally when momentum establishes something so clear as that, that you know you just glance at it and you can see it. It you it does it for a purpose. It's building a structure as an escape valve. Well we ran up the, the number for this quarter is in the mid $24 range to close a week out. 2444 to be precise. January ran up to that same number, but closed the week out about 10 cents below it. Couldn't close the week out in the January rally above the zero line. Dropped back down under 22, we're back up at 24 again. So right now this current rally in silver is trying to blow through this structure. When silver clears that momentum structure, it is very clear, very wide, it's a big base, our bet is that silver price will, like a vacuum, rally up to the top end of the range of the last few years. There's a zone up there on the price charts, you can see it. Peak weekly closes a couple times have been around 28. Peak weekly highs have been around 30. So there's a little zone up there, $2 zone, where the highest and the weekly close, high, closing highs have been. We think if you cross our quarterly trend number, silver's going to rapidly move to the top end of that range. And we've warned our subscribers, if you want to sell it there, go ahead, but you'll be skewered, okay? Because we think if you go back to those highs, you're going through. It may pause there. Uh, silver is overdue to regain value versus gold. We all know it's got squished after the 2011 peak. Its relative performance dropped. But when we measure relative performance of silver versus gold, and run momentum studies of it, we see that silver is broken out versus gold. It's now in a positive performance trend versus gold. And we think that is a further wind at the back of silver, such that when it closes over that three-quarter average on the net momentum charts, it's got the wind at its back of being better performer than gold now. You have to measure it. You, you can't glance at the price charts to see that relative performance, by the way. And if you cross that quarterly momentum structure, we think silver's going to come to life 
And I don't exaggerate, but it wouldn't shock me if silver behaved much like Bitcoin did a year or so ago when it went from 10,000 to 60,000 in about nine months. Um, I think that we could expect that kind of behavior from silver.